legislators are already busy drawing new lines and reshaping congressional and legislative districts statewide. This week, Governor Kemp called state lawmakers back to the Capitol in November to redraw the districts. Ashlyn Webb joins us live in studio with more on what we can expect. Ashlyn. Yes, they're set to meet beginning November 3rd, so we're a little more than a month away until legislators meet for the once in a decade redistricting process. But this is bound to be a contentious session given the power struggle between Georgia Republicans and Democrats. The Republican majority will draw districts that could gain them a seat in the U.S. House and keep control of the General Assembly. So what's redistricting? Every 10 years after each U.S. Census, legislators need to look at every state and federal election district. The idea is to make districts roughly the same size. So with the 2020 census complete, it's time for the General Assembly to draw new lines. This is true for everything from Congress to the state legislature. But if you have people who represent you by districts, those districts population shifts in the course of a decade. Georgia has gained about 1 million people since 2010, mostly in urban areas. But meanwhile, rural counties shrank. Because of that, Charles Bullock, political science professor at the University of Georgia, says one of the biggest shifts will be happening here in central and south Georgia. The congressional district that lost the most people is District 2, which Sanford Bishop represents. It covers southwest Georgia, stretching from Columbus to parts of Houston County to Macon and then Albany. And that district is underpopulated, it looks like, by about 92,000 people. Also underpopulated is Congressional District 8, which Austin Scott represents. Bullock says the district lost roughly 45,000 people since 2010. It stretches from parts of Macon Bibb and Houston counties all the way to Valdosta and Thomasville. With uh, new maps, that are going to bring an additional 130 to 140,000 people into these districts. And you can't go south because there's a Florida line down there. You can't go west because there's Alabama there. You can't really go east because you know, the 1st District and 12th District are not that much overpopulated. That means you're going to be going closer and closer towards Atlanta. So what does this mean to you, the voters who live in these districts? Or for some voters, when they go to vote in 2022, they may be surprised to find out that the person who has represented them for years and is running again this year, they don't live in that district anymore. But we won't know exactly who could be affected until state Republicans and Democrats present their drawings of the new maps in early November and when the General Assembly makes the final decisions. Frank, Lori, back to you. Thank you, Ashlyn. We reached out to nearly a dozen state legislators, including Senator John Kennedy, the chair of the redistricting committee. None of them responded.